In our Friday teachings this month, we are dealing with prayer and fasting. Amen. And last week, we started delving into praying. I haven't done two previous weeks on uh, fasting. So today, I want to emphasize a bit on um, praying some more, where we began. Who can remind me of the prayer we're looking at last week? Say me palal. Amen. P-A-L-A-L. The prayer that God always answers. The prayer that always gets an answer. I think that kind of prayer is worthy of two services. Amen. We need to stretch it a bit. We need to stretch it a bit. Today I want to teach on a message titled Praying Men. Amen. Praying what? Praying men or men of prayer as you may like it. Praying men. Of course, when we say men, we also imply women. Praying men and women. Praying men and women. The importance of prayer cannot be undermined. Amen. The what? The importance of prayer cannot be undermined. For every relationship to work, there are certain things that you must not ignore. Whether the relationship between a father and a son, a mother and a daughter, a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law. For a relationship to work, there are things you must not ignore. For a relationship to continue to hold forth, for a relationship to remain strong and fortified. To avoid such things as heartbreaks and divorce and disappointments, there are certain things that must hold strong in a relationship. There are certain things if they are not in place in a relationship, you can tell how far and how long this relationship will go, all things being equal, unless a miracle happens. There are certain things, if you look at a couple, married husband and wife, that if they are not addressing and fixing, if they are not correcting, you can tell how things are going to go long term. It is, easy, it is very possible to accurately predict what can happen in a home or in a marriage when certain ingredients are missing. The reasons why we see a lot of things messed up in the world today, including the marriages and like the pastors have been preaching all Wednesdays, making reference to the divorce rate, which is global and no secret, including in the church, is because, again, as is typical of men many times, we emphasize on the minor and we ignore the majors. One of the main reasons, um, like uh, Pastor Phoebe began to say, one of the, the main reasons why you see there is a whole lot of divorce in the church, and it, the, 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 the marriage between couples is supposed to be a reflection of their relationship with God. Like we see in scriptures every time. If marriages are failing, then it is, a, it is a, an eye-opener. It is a reflection of the relationship that people actually have with their God. So there are a lot of people in the church of God who have actually already been divorced from their God, but they are in church. They are separated. They are separated. The relationship and the home has failed. In terms of their relationship with God has failed. But they are in church. All across the world. Now, if we stretch it a bit, if I connect that scripture where Jesus Christ says, if a man was to divorce his wife, he says, let him stay unmarried. He says, because either of them, let them stay unmarried. He says, because um, by marrying or joining themselves to another, he says, that person, you make the person fornicate. So they're beginning to fornicate and to commit adultery. So now you think that because a person is divorced and is in the church or in the house of God, um, means everything is well no god is saying the same thing even in a marriage in a marriage setting it's possible for people to be divorced and be separate and both of them be living individual lives and you think everything is fine but actually they are separate and cut off so i say the following relationship in with god there are certain things we must put we must put in place that must be functioning so that we are not living as a divorced divorced person or a divorcee as you put it. Praise the Lord. 
And one of those core ingredients that must not be missing in our relationship with God is our praying. So let me say, say prayer. So that's what I want to talk to you about praying men, praying men, praying men. Amen. Statistically, if you look at um, psychologists and people who do research of marriages, if you if, if people if people come to you and you are counseling people, there are um, two or a few things, two or three things that are very key and core. That if those three things are failing, you can tell this marriage will definitely fail. Amen. Surprisingly, at the heart of the success of many marriages, globally across different faiths, is their spirituality. So that sister and that brother who wants to marry a brother who is not spiritual, you are setting up yourself for trouble long term. That sister and that brother who wants to marry a brother who is spiritual, but you don't want to be spiritual, you are setting up yourself for trouble in long term. Am I speaking to somebody? It's only a case of something that will show with time. That person who is ready to compromise on spirituality, that you, 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 to you, everything else is important, but so long as it's just God fearing, you have your priorities wrong. And that is same, that same attitude is what we take many times when it comes to our own relationship with God. So we put things like service in front, we put things like, you know, um even reading books for example you put things like reading books in front and we'll forget the key and the core things there are certain things that are very key that makes relationships and home to succeed and all of them whatever it is even amongst men um border around intimacies of different kind intimacies of different kinds so um i just spoke about spirituality we tell folks, we say, in counseling couples, sometimes I tell them, a couple that prays together stays together. If you can't pray, you are planning yourself trouble. You are planning yourself, you are planning for yourself trouble. A couple that prays together stays together. If neither of you can submit your ego and your pride to say, we have to come before God and create a family altar. You're busy talking about everything else and quarreling about everything else, but none of you is able to look beyond their selfish self and say, let us sit down and let us pray. Then you are setting yourself up for trouble long term. So that's the first intimacy, praying together. Then, of course, obviously, see things like, you know, sexual intercourse and all forms of intimacies at different levels that are of the physical kind. If this is missing in a family or in a home, you know there's going to be trouble sooner or later from A or B. There's going to be trouble sooner or later. Everybody can say, can deny it. You can say, oh, it doesn't matter. She can say it doesn't matter, but don't worry. Statistics are shown. Praise the Lord. Of course, there's things like finance, giving, meeting needs, because at the end of the day, when there's no finances, the, the real thing is not so much the finances as it is the fact that when money is not there, it puts you in a very shattered state. It's in a very shattered, struggling state so that your sanity becomes questioned. And so intimacies cannot even be expressed properly at such moments. These three things are some of the most important things that make relationships to fail. Praise the Lord. But how does this relate to praying? Because we must realize that what we have with God or what we call Christianity is a relationship. So me relationship. Christianity is supposed to be a relationship. My Christianity is supposed to be a relationship. And so if my Christianity is lacking in intimacies, if I have been a, 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 a churchgoer, if I, have, if I claim to be a Christian, but I, I don't feel the, the intimacy, the proximity, the satisfaction that is supposed to come from, from relating with God, from what we call koinonia or fellowship communion with god if it's not there long term something is about to happen to that relationship you are going to either divorce god or god will divorce you am i speaking to somebody 
there's going to be a separation at some point someone is going to be sacrificing something because you know you 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 we all long to go to the same place where we were satisfied we love his presence because the last time we were there it just i, I was really cool and comfortable around you i feel good so when i come into your presence there is this feeling that i feel now imagine marrying um um someone for example imagine marrying someone for years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years. Not as though there is some war or you are in prison or anything, but you guys never, ever got intimate. There's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem. Amen. There's what? There's a problem. Never. So if you if you say if you, if you say you are a Christian and you come to church and you you know you do everything but there is never intimacy the only thing you know closest you know is when we are in church and, and and sometimes you know why I feel for those people who work in different departments you know and why even more so you are the ones who really 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 need to get really intimate with God so that when you're church you're always serving when everybody else is praying, even that little small corporate prayer, you are not praying because you are looking at the monitor to be sure everything is right. You are on the camera, you are serving, you are giving, you are consistently giving, but never receiving. Then there is going to be a problem. I'm asking you somebody. So now, even if, if I'm working in such a place, I must realize that I have extra work to do and I must be intentional to see to my spiritual development and my intimacies. I'm asking you somebody now. So, I want to not just be a worker in the house of god i want to be known by him look at what god says one time he says he says he's going to look at certain people who said they healed in his name they cast out devils in his name they helped the poor in his name they did all sorts of things and he's going to look at them and he's going to say i know you not praise god we were never intimate we were never what intimacy is is is, is, is the game amen we're never intimate I never saw you. It's true. Your name is in the church register. It's true. They have pictures and videos of you in the church. But do I know you? I, the God of the church you went to, do I know you? So prayer is that thing that brings us to a place of intimacy. Amen. Amen. I have to say this, um, putting the foundations right is so important. He says if the foundation is broken, what shall the righteous do? A lot of times we try to put the cart before the horse instead of the horse before the cart. Praise the Lord. There are many things we try to do. There are many things. Listen, I'm, I'm not sure when or where, or where I was saying this. Having your priorities straight is so important. Having what? It's so important. Having your priorities straight is so important. What matters the most to you? What matters the most to you? Amen. Who matters the most to you? In this life, who matters the most to you? Some people, the person that matters the most to them are people, 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 people. Amen. Amen. There are things you know you should not be doing, but people make you do them because people matters the most to you. You should not even matter the most to yourself. I'm asking you somebody. It is idol worship. You should not even matter the most to yourself how much more people. You know a person who has his priorities wrong by the things he does and how he does them. Am I speaking to somebody? Who matter the most to you? The person who should matter the most to you should be God. Hello, somebody. Should be what? So, 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 who should be that person who you, if you are going to try to impress somebody, who should you be trying to impress the most? 
God. Let God be true. Let every other person be liars. Amen. Praise Jesus. Let God be true. And all men will, will become liars. Whether they are lying in that moment or not, it doesn't matter. So long as God is true, eventually they will become liars. Eventually what? They will become liars. Praise God. Yeah. Look at that, your neighbor. Help me preach to them. Say, listen to what God is saying. Say, humble yourself. Listen now. Change. Change. Hey. You know, I, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing weddings, marriages. I made so much noise. It didn't even last up to a year. People in church. I'm mean, talking about people who are in the house of God, churches globally. One year, two years, three years. Why? Priority was always wrong. Praise God. You know, as, well, we thank God for His goodness, but um, if I were you, if I were you, Many of you who are still very young and all that thing. I'll be careful to not make certain decisions in my life. I'll be careful to not make certain decisions in my life. You're not in a competition with anybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I see people who have this self-inflicted competition. There is this pressure. You're pressuring yourself so foolishly. Who is pressure? Who are you competing with? Amen. Who are you competing with? And you make decisions and choices that eventually alter the whole life. Can you calm down? Be calming down. Be calming down. The right thing to do before you even think in relationship, especially when you're still very young, and even if you are grown and old, even if you are aged, the spirit of truth is in you. There are certain things you should know. No, you shouldn't be done like this. You don't say, because I'm getting old, now let me build on sand. Are you high? The Bible speaks of a wise builder and then a foolish one. You know there are issues in your life you need to fix and deal with. You just let it be. Whatever will, whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. Amen. I say this again, and I thank you for all the teachings that have come from all the pastors. Go fix yourself. I was saying that last week. The, the, the Palal prayer is on the premise of a man who, who has met God. The effectual fervent prayer, not of any man, of a righteous man, of a righteous man, makes power available. Go fix yourself. Before you decide to be looking for somebody's daughter or somebody's son, take yourself to the master, the creator of men. Let him know you. I'm not going to somebody. Let him know you. God is looking for men he can partner with for generations. People he can, he can hit his chest about. Go to God at the place of prayer. I will show you some examples now. Pray men from scriptures and how they change the courses of their life because they knew God intimately. Hallelujah. Because they knew God intimately. When you know God intimately, it puts your emotions in check. God will first, ah, yeah. Listen, no good manufacturer ever releases a product they are not done work on. They will take time to polish you, to deal certain things with you, so that when they bring you out, they can say, yeah, these are, they put their trademark on you. Hallelujah. You go to God at a place of prayer. Cry if you must. Palah. Cry if you must. 
I got to fix me. Amen. I got to fix me. Amen. I want to build with you. I want to build with you. I want to build with you. I want to marry. I want to be married to you first. Before, before Eve came, there was it, was it was God and Adam. I'm not know somebody. I want to have something with you. I want to know that before I embark on this journey, you got my back. In fact, it is God who told Adam, it is not good for you to be alone. It was not the other way around. Say, God, have you not seen? It's not good for me to go. No, it was God who looked at him. There was something they had going on. And God looked and said, okay, he's done well. He has become a man. First Samuel, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. What I'm, what I'm talking to you about is how to have a home. Hmm? How to have a home. That will not be subject to the same rules as you are seeing all around the world today. How to not be one of those whose homes would end abruptly. Isn't that amazing? How men, you can see a trouble, you can see trouble coming, and you're warning them, and they just keep going, and they just keep going. Look at what is happening all around the world. My prayer is that, that's why I said, you know, that God will give you humility. You'll be humble to receive. Listen to me. There's no reason why any man should take marriage seriously if he doesn't fear the, the author of it. There's no reason. It can, like, you can, like, it can be a sweet man. It can be a very good man. A day will come if there's no, there is no boundaries. There's no boundaries. It is God that keeps the boundaries in it. I'm asking you somebody. I was, in, I was in Ternopil. After service, you know, had some meetings with the daughters and all of them. You know, several of them, and they were asking questions. And, I, and I, one of the daughters asked me, she said, she's asking about, um, said, uh, Papa, um, how do you... Uh, you have been married. You and your wife, people are separate and all. So how do you do it? You know, all that thing. So like, how do you been able to hold on and all that thing? So I'm like, I said, I said, I said we're prepared for it. We're prepared for it. It's not a struggle at all. It's a lifestyle. And we're prepared. Before for you it. find someone, and before someone finds you, they need to find God first. Am I speaking to somebody? They need to what? They need to find God first. And I mean really find God. And you know if they've really found God by the fruit. By their fruit you shall know them. Verse 10, first Samuel 1, verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. The word pray there is the word pala. Amen. Last week we gave definitions, and for those who missed it, I recommend it online. We have a full message on that. The previous message, Palau. 
One of the meanings of palal is to intervene, is to mediate, is to intercede, is to judge. Praise the Lord. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. I say this to you. There are things that are going to happen in your life that will require that you know how to pray. Am I speaking to somebody? There are going to be days. There are going to be moments that is going to require you to be someone who knows how to pray. And she prayed. Next verse, please, because of time. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look at the affliction of your handmaid and remember me and not forget your handmaid, but will give unto your handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Amen. Praise the Lord. A man or a woman that knew how to pray to the extent where they knew how to give something. If God cannot get your five minutes, if God cannot get your 15 minutes, if God cannot get your 30 minutes, should we take you seriously? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Benny Hinn says, says one of the secrets to his success is the wife he married. So you see this woman, she prayed. This woman prayed. You think Pastor Benny prayed. So you see this woman, she prayed. She's in a dire situation now. She's in such a state where she can pray. Really pray to the excellent where she knows I need to give something that is beyond me. Something I've not even received. And you know her level as a praying woman because she held her word. She did not, after giving birth, change or try to turn it around. No. She held her grip. So she was not in appeal. She was not a babe. Am I speaking to somebody? She prays. Amen. Remember the story of the Ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. Do you know? <laughs> Let me say this. Do you know that if those foolish virgins had come many hours later, they would still have made it? So if they did not, if they left the house later than their friends who went ahead of them, because they were wise enough to know, oh, we don't have oil, let's go get oil. They would have made it in time because the man, the husband man, did not come suddenly. But pressure would not let them. You saw everybody who had oil are living. You joined them and lived too. And you left the most important thing at home, thinking everybody else is at your level. I'm asking somebody. There are some of you at this phase of your life, the only thing you should be thinking of is praying. Leveling up with God. Having God's approval. Having God's endorsement. Because this is a person who has tarried and been with me. This one's voice, I know. 
And she vowed a vow and said, Oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaid and give me a male child, I'll give him to you. Ah, God is like, what did you say? Don't try that. The last man who said that was Abraham. Amen. The next person who tried it was Moses. He was ready to cut off the skin. Ah. Said, Don't try that. I take vows. I take people seriously. Amen. It's a wonderful man out there for you. It's a wonderful woman out there for you, wherever she is, here or anywhere she is in the world. The question is, are you ready to do the needful as a person to get there? Hello, somebody. <laughs>